What's going on guys, CTA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at a really awesome Linux distribution that you definitely need to try out called Endless OS. Now I heard about this a while ago, but I kind of lost track of it. And then recently they released a version for the Raspberry Pi 4, but unfortunately there is no hardware acceleration and it's really slow on the Raspberry Pi right now. I tested it out there, performance was pretty horrible, but the operating system itself looked amazing. So I went ahead and installed it on this low end laptop. Now what I have here is just a $99 Lenovo laptop I got for Black Friday, two gigs of RAM and a dual core Celeron N4000 CPU. But Endless OS runs great on this little machine. Since I've installed it on here, I've installed it on two more PCs in the house and I've given copies to the kids because this is an awesome starter Linux operating system and it's also great for longtime users. Installing Endless OS is pretty simple. It's just like any other operating system. You're going to head over to their website. I'll leave a link in the description. You can download their image, flash it to a USB drive, wipe your internal storage, or you can install it alongside Windows if you want to do that on your laptop or PC. If the interest is there, I will do a full tutorial video, but it's really not going to be different from any other Linux installation tutorial on YouTube right now. So I'm super excited to show this off because this operating system is really for everybody. And if you get the main image, it comes with everything you need for an operating system pre-installed right out of the box. So here it is. This is Endless OS. Now I'm a big fan of this. I've been using it for the past week or so on these smaller little laptops like you saw at the beginning of this video. Overall, everything's been working really well on this small laptop here. Now trying to run higher end apps just isn't going to work on a small setup like this. But if you install this on a more powerful PC, you have no trouble at all. Everything you see here on the desktop is pre-installed with their multi-language image and it comes in at about 13 gigabytes, but they do have a smaller one with none of this installed. It's just pretty much a base image. This is definitely really easy to use and it's very powerful. We do have YouTube right on the main menu and with this little machine here, no trouble with YouTube video playback. Everything works great. Looks awesome. Sounds working over HDMI through this little laptop and the dual speakers built in. Google Chrome, you can browse the internet just like you can on pretty much any operating system. It's pretty quick, but I do like their home screen here. There's a lot of sites pre-configured that you can jump right into, like NASA over here for science. But if you just want to head over to, let's say, Netflix, it works because this is the real Chrome browser. It's not Chromium like you run on a little ARM single board computer. This is running on an x86 CPU. So we'll just head over to Netflix. And there actually might be an app for this that you can put on the main menu. Been watching Dirty Money. Billion dollars. There we have it. Go full screen with it. Got a nice little media set up. Defaulted and then you just saw this. So all of these apps are pre-configured. We have the full LibreOffice suite built in, Encyclopedia. I do like these little apps that they have through Curiosity. Now this is definitely for the kids, but this is something I've never really seen before. So let's just see how to. We open this up and it gives us kind of a Wikipedia type deal here. So I'm gonna go to Arts and Entertainment. And this might be cheesy to some people, but for kids, this is amazing. Be a DJ. Loads right up, gives you the steps to being a DJ. Now, personally, I thought this was a really cool little addition to this operating system, especially for learning. We'll go back to curiosity, animals, and I've set two of these little laptops up for my kids. I have a nine-year-old and a six-year-old, and they absolutely love this. Reptiles, green sea turtle. It'll tell us everything we want to know about the green sea turtle. There's a lot of other stuff pre-configured with this bigger image. If we go to media over here, photo editor, we also have GIMP installed, which is a great open source photo editor. Blender, Inkscape, we can watch our videos that we have on a USB thumb drive from here. Audacity, everything you really need in an operating system is pre-installed right out of the box. But there are a couple apps that I installed. Now, if I go to games here, I've installed RetroArch, the Dolphin Emulator, PPSSPP, and Minecraft. Unfortunately, only on this machine here, this little Lenovo, Minecraft keeps crashing on me and I'm not exactly sure why, but if I try to load it up, it'll just kick me right back out. Now it does work great on another higher end laptop with an Intel chip, but this little N4000 here just isn't cutting it for Minecraft for some reason. But yeah, that's really the only problem that I've run into here. Now, if you want to add more apps, 
You don't have to mess around with Terminal, but you can if you want to. This uses Flatpak, and we can go to more apps right here. They have a full app store. So we have Featured up at the top. Pretty much everything we see in the Featured section is already pre-installed. There's a few that they've left out, but we can even install Firefox over here. There's a Learning section, Reference and News, Games, Learn to Code, Multimedia, and so on and so on. So we'll go back to Games here. And like I mentioned, I installed PPSSPP, I installed RetroArch, and I installed the Dolphin Emulator right from here. If I want to install ScumVM, I don't have to mess around with the terminal. I'll just click Download, and it's going to install for me. Automatic Updates is already set up here. If you go down to your little user icon, we can go to Settings. And all of your settings for the PC are located here. Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, we can change the background power management, network, automatic updates, devices, and details. As you can see, Endless OS 3, I got two gigs of memory in this little machine, Celeron N4000 with the Intel UHD graphics. So this is a low-end machine, but it's running Endless OS pretty well. And I know a lot of my audience is into retro gaming, and that's pretty much why I installed these here. I have Dolphin, RetroArch, and PPSSPP. This is the version for an x86 platform, so it's really easy to use. Your online updater, core updater, but I've tested out some PS1 on here and it works great on this little machine. I'm sure the lower end stuff like Neo Geo, SNES, NES is going to work fine with RetroArch on this operating system with this low end computer. Another one I was curious about here was actually the Dolphin emulator. Performance isn't stellar on this little PC, but if you install this on a more powerful system, you could run GameCube games all day. So as you can see, it's definitely not perfect, and not all games are going to run at full speed on a little machine like this, but overall, some of the stuff is playable. Full standalone version of PPSSPP. It is up to date at 1.94. We'll go ahead and start this up, I'll load my game, and I'm just using a little Xbox controller connected over Bluetooth. Everything's working great here, and PSP actually performs really well on this $99 laptop. So Endless OS definitely has you covered with retro gaming. And like I showed you, I didn't have to go into Terminal and install any of this that you just saw running. It was just under More Apps, in their App Store, under Games. You can also search from here up top. Everything you need is located right here. So I definitely recommend at least trying this operating system out, especially if you've been looking for a new Linux operating system to mess around with, or something to replace your Windows desktop with. This is one of my personal favorites right now, and I've tested out a lot of different Linux distros. And one of the big reasons is ease of use. All day long, I'm in terminal doing real work for my real job. And when I get home, I just, I really don't feel like doing that anymore. And Endless OS just feels like a turnkey operating system to me. You boot it up, you already got everything you need pre-installed. If you need anything else, you can go right to the store. You don't have to open up terminal. You don't have to type in any commands. You can just get what you need and use the operating system like it sits. And the other big reason I like it is the educational factor. I have three children that use a Windows PC, but now I've swapped them over to Endless OS. They've been getting adjusted to it, but my daughter is nine and she's been really loving this operating system, especially with the learning tools built in. And in this video, I didn't even really scratch the surface on what's pre-installed and what can be done with Endless OS. There's a lot more to it than I showed, so I definitely recommend trying it out. But that's pretty much it for this video. I really appreciate you watching. If you're interested in seeing a full install tutorial, just let me know in the comments below and I'll kind of gauge the audience to see if it's really worth doing or not. And as soon as hardware acceleration is available for Endless OS on the Raspberry Pi 4, I will be doing a full tutorial on that and I'll show it off. I think it'll be an awesome little operating system to run on the board as long as we have that hardware acceleration. And if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. But like always, thanks for watching.